So what's going on with the real estate market here on Staten Island? We've been hearing all over the place, everybody's calling the doom and gloom. I don't know what to tell you. All I can tell you is let me show you the data because in the data, there's an indication that there's some changes to the home prices. But then in my experience and my agent's experience working with buyers, things don't really look exactly that way. So my screen and first I'm going to show you what Redfin is talking about. So Redfin has made a market prediction for 2023. And they are saying, or they said that the post pandemic sales slump will push home prices down for the first time in a decade. So we expect home sales to sink to their lowest level in more than a decade in 2023, as high mortgage rates keep housing costs up and prevent people from moving. High homeowner equity and a resilient job market will stave off and wave of foreclosures. I agree with that. I agree that the foreclosures are not going to be really high as many, especially investors, were hoping. So let's go through their predictions. They have quite a few, but I'm only going to focus on the ones that are important. So prediction number one, home sales will fall to their lowest level since 2011 with a slower recovery in the second half of the year. Now I want to emphasize home sales will fall. That means that the number of sales will fall, not the prices. Okay. They are likely to fall to their lowest. Okay. So that's fewer home sales than any year in 2011 when the U S was reeling from the subprime mortgage crisis and a 30% decline from 2021 during the pandemic home buyer boom. It would also lead to the lowest housing turnover rate since the early 1980s with just 32 out of every thousand households selling their home in 2023. Existing home sales will likely fall 31% over year over year in the first quarter. But this is all nationwide prediction. When buyers don't want to buy, sellers don't want to sell. Low demand plus the lock in effect of homeowners with ultra low mortgage rates staying put mean new listings will continue to decline year over year during the first half of 2023. Okay, let's look at prediction number two. Mortgage rates will decline ending the year below 6%. So they're hoping or they're predicting that that's going to happen. We expect 30 year fixed mortgage rates to gradually decline to around 5.8 by the end of the year with average 2023 home buyers rate sitting at about 6.1 percent well if mortgage rates will decline i'm even afraid to say this out loud but bidding words are going to come back i promise you that prediction number three Home prices will post their first year over year decline in a decade, but the U.S. will avoid a wave of foreclosure. Oh, see, you know why? Because we expect that the median U.S. home sale price to drop by roughly 4%, the first annual drop since 2012. So the median price, they predict a possibility, will drop to 368000 in 2023. And that's due to elevated rates and final sale price starting to reflect homes that went under contract in late 2022. Price would fall more if not for a lack of homes for sale. But what do I always tell you? The low inventory is keeping the prices up even with the much higher interest rates that we've been experiencing for almost a year now. Another possibility, less likely scenario is that prices will stay mostly flat on a year over year basis in 2023. That could occur if mortgage rates and or new listings fall faster than expected, which will drop prices up. But if inflation remains stubborn, rates stay higher than expected and our supply increases more than expected, prices could fall by double digits. Let me tell you something. 
that's not going to happen, at least here on Staten Island, because people who, because people who have no reason to move are not going to be selling their homes and foreclosures are not really going to, even if they're going to happen, they're not going to happen in such numbers that's going to put the inventory levels in such high rate that's going to overlap the number of buyers that are looking to buy. Okay. So take it as my opinion. Prices remaining elevated above pre-pandemic levels also mean a wave of foreclosure next year is highly unlikely. Very few homeowners are likely to see their mortgage fall underwater. Even with next year's anticipated price decline, that's because the homeowners who've had their home for at least a few years have fixed low mortgage payments and plentiful home equity after value skyrocketed during the pandemic. Even those who bought recently near the height of the market are likely to have made a sizable down payment and therefore have some equity to land on. The Midwest and the Northeast will hold up the best as overall market schools. Okay, so there you are. So let's take a look and see what's up and what's really going on in Staten Island as far as the prices and inventory and all that stuff. So in Staten Island, new listings in Staten Island decreased 17% to 396 listings. Pending sales were down 35.6% to 221. Inventory levels fell 5.1%. That's a direct connect to the listing, the decreasing listing to 1,257 units. Prices were a tad soft. The median sale price decreased by 3.8% to $625,000. Before I go even any further, I want to tell you why this is happening. Why do we see a decline of the medium home sale price on Staten Island? Because when you keep listing a property at a higher market value that it should be, what happens is it takes longer to sell and you're going to sell for less than you would have sold if you had put it in where the market value is. And that's why it is crucial to always know exactly where is the price point that you need to list your house at. I have a video that talks about how to price a house correctly. You can watch that video at some point or jump to it right now if that's what you want to do. Days on the market was up 9.7% to 82 days. Buyers, yeah, they always feel them power as month supply of inventory was up 26% to 3.7 months. Now, as I always mention, six months of inventory is where the breaking point is for tipping over from a seller's market to a buyer's market. 3.7%, we're just about halfway there and there's no guarantee that we're going to get there. As sales slow, time on the market increasing, with the average home spending 26 days on the market as of last measure, according to National Association of Realtors. Sellers' concessions have made a comeback, giving buyers more time and negotiation power when shopping for a home. Although home prices remain high, mortgage rates declined steadily throughout January, falling to their lowest level since September, sparking a recent surge in mortgage demand. Lower rates should aid in affordability and may soon lead to an uptick in market activity ahead of the spring selling season. Year-over-year -year change in closed sales, almost 50%, 45.3% less closed sales. Don't confuse closed sales. Don't confuse this with pricing please thank you one year change in median sale price 3.8 percent one year change in inventory 5.1 percent lower today we're going to look at the full report of staten island and then we'll break it down into different sections of staten island because usually different parts of the borough will have a little bit of different effects on the pricing whether it's up down selling above asking price 
or below. Staten Island, so entire Staten Island new listings down by 17.9% year over year, and they're down 17%. Pending sale down 35.6%, closed sales down 45.3%. Days on the market are up from 74 days to 82 days. The median sale price is down. We spoke about that by 3.8%. That's again, if you stop overpricing your home, you will not have this problem. Maybe in the future, but not yet. Average sale price is down by 3.2%. This is percent original list price received. So it's down by 4.2%. So this is an indication this is a direct connect from what you're asking what's the original list price and then price reductions and then what the actual sold price is so if you start too high you're gonna have to come down several times or even one time before you reach that number where a buyer is going to make an offer so inventory of home sales are down so again the we're getting less and less homes on the market and the month supply of inventory is up from three month supply to 3.7 month supply i really want to dive in today into the different sections of Staten Island. And we're going to start with the East Shore. So the East Shore includes data from Arocar, Grasmere, Old Town, South Beach, Duncan Hills below Highland Boulevard, Grand City and Midland Beach. Let's see how the market is doing for that area. So we have year over year change in new listings down 26.4%. Year over year change in closed sales down 13.1%. One year change in median sale price is up by 2.8%. So the East Shore is doing pretty steady right now as far as the price, the median sale price. And so it is different than what we just went through in the overall on the Staten Island data. And the next on our list is Gateway. And Gateway includes Newdorp, Oakwood, Oakwood Beach, Oakwood Heights, Bay Terrace, Great Kills, and Eltingville. So let's see how we're doing here. Year over year and new listings are down by 20.8%. Year over year change in closed sales are down to 37.6%. Your median sale price is still up by 4.6% year over year. Month supply of inventory is up from two and a half months to 3.1 months. And next on our list is Greater St. George. And that in includes data from Fort Wadsworth, Concord, Shore Acres, Rosebank, Clifton, Stapleton, Tompkinsville, St. George, Ward Hill, Park Hill, and Grimes Hills. So what do we have here? We have year over year change in new listings, less than 2.7% down. Year over year change in closed sales are down by 39.2%. Year over year change in medial same price. Uh oh, alert, alert, 14.1. So here's where we are seeing a little dent in the greater St. George area and the median sale price went down. That's where the percentage is in the last three months, by 14.1%. So the median sale price was 520 and it is down to 446,500. So you guys, I told you the same thing last time. If you are looking to buy a house and you couldn't afford to buy a house, this might be a great opportunity for you to look into these areas. Make sure that you reach out to me and I can set you up on a search. So who's next on our list is the Heartland section. And the Heartland section include data from Willowbrook, Manor Heights, Bulls Head, New Springville, Heartland Village, Travis, and Lateret. What do we have here? Let's look at the last three months. In the last three months, we have a median sale price went down by 3.2%. 
So that's what's going on in that area. Last time on our market update, we saw the same kind of data showing us that in the Heartland area, there's a dent and it looks like the price is slightly like three point something percent are going down. And this is still true today. And the reason is because a lot of these homes were really priced really high. Okay, let's move on. Next on our list is the North Shore. And the North Shore includes data from New Brighton, Snug Harbor, Livingston, Rendell Manor, West Brighton, Fort Richmond, Mariners Harbor, Grenadville, Arlington, Bloomfield and Elm Park. All right, so there's a decline of 3.4% year over year. In the new listings, there's a decline of 25.5% year over year in closed sales. And look at this. There you go. One year change in median sale price went up by 2% still. So percentage of original list price received is down by 3.1%. And the median sale price ooh, ooh, in the last three months went up by 2% from 505 to 515. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. I keep telling you all the time if you watch my videos, real estate is super hyper local and you really gotta know the area you're in and how is it performing and what's really going on there before you go run around and scream that the sky is falling okay who's next on our list south shore south shore is always interesting and it includes data from annadale southeast annadale arden heights rossville woodrow yuguna princess bay pleasant plains charleston richmond valley and tottenville so let me show you what's going on in the South Shore. What do we have here? We have the median sale price is up by 5.1% from 682.500 to 717.500. And the percent of original list price received is still down. 2 point by 2.7 percent but again that's the reason people overprice their houses the month's supply of inventory went up from 2.4 months to 3.3 months still only just halfway to even an indication that we're going to be in a buyer's market if at all did not tell you that in overall market is showing one way but when you dig in and look at all of these things i love to show you what to look for and what to pay attention to so this was an update of what's going on in the last three months in the real estate market in staten island and in separate sections so if you're a homeowner and you found yourself being in an area where the prices are still steady or even up, congratulations to you. If you're a home buyer trying to buy a house on Staten Island, I just showed you where the opportunities are. You might want to check out and get lucky over there. Make sure and subscribe to my channel, like this video, share with your friends, click on the notification bell. Make sure you're back here again next month for more real estate updates. Thanks for watching.